In this video, we're diving into one of the most vital areas of ProPresenter, the presentation editor. This is where you'll create and customize all of your presentation content, from basic text slides to complex multimedia presentations. Whether you're new to ProPresenter or looking to level up your skills, understanding the presentation editor is essential. So let's jump right in and explore what makes this tool so powerful. Let's start by opening the presentation editor. You can do this in several ways. Click the edit button in the toolbar, right click on a slide and select edit slide, press control E on Mac or PC, or select view presentation editor from the menu bar. The presentation editor is divided into five main sections. In the center is our canvas. This is where we see and edit our currently selected slide. To the left is the slide navigator, where you can select different slides within a presentation to edit. Below the slide navigator is the object list, showing all objects on our current slide. And to the right is the inspector, where we make detailed adjustments to our objects, slides, or the entire presentation. If you want to quickly send what you're working on to your audience screen, just click the show button at the bottom right of the editor. The canvas is where most of your editing happens. It uses an XY coordinate system, with the top left being position 00. zero. Let's customize how our canvas looks. At the bottom right of the editor, you'll see several buttons. The checkerboard background button toggles between a solid color and a checkerboard pattern. The guidelines button allows you to add guidelines to align objects precisely. The grid button adds a grid to help with positioning. The ruler button shows rulers along the top and left edges. And the zoom button lets you adjust your view. I find the grid and guidelines particularly helpful when I need to align multiple elements precisely. Let's add some objects to our slide. You'll see a menu across the top of the canvas containing things that can be added to a slide. From this menu, we can add text, various shapes, media, video inputs, and even web content. Let's add a text box first. Just click on the text icon and you'll see a new text box appear on your slide. Double click to edit the text. Now let's add a shape, maybe a rectangle behind our text. Click the shape icon and then rectangle. I'll resize it by dragging the edges and position it behind our text. Here are some helpful shortcuts when working with objects. Click and drag to position objects. Hold Option on Mac or Control on Windows while dragging to duplicate objects. Hold Shift while resizing to maintain the aspect ratio. And hold Command on Mac or Alt on Windows near the edges to rotate objects. Below the slide navigator is the object list. This shows all objects on our current slide and their stacking order. Objects higher on the list appear in front of objects lower on the list. You can drag items up and down to change this order. Hover over an object and you'll see icons to lock or hide that object. Locking prevents accidental changes, while hiding removes it from view in the editor, though it will still show on the output when you present the slide. Right click on an object to rename, hide, unhide, lock, unlock, or delete it. The inspector on the right side gives us detailed control over our slides and objects. It changes depending on what's selected in the canvas. When nothing is selected, you'll see tabs for presentation, which controls settings for the entire presentation, slide controls settings for the current slide, and Build controls animation sequences. When an object is selected, you'll see Shape, which controls the object's appearance and position, Text controls text formatting and effects, and Build controls how the object animates on and off screen. Let's look at the Shape tab first. Here, we can precisely position our object, adjust its size, opacity, and apply various fills like solid colors, gradients, or media. Now let's select our text and look at the text tab. Here we can change font, size, color, and style, alignment and spacing, 
add text effects like stroke and shadow, and even link text to dynamic content like timers or a system clock. Let's add some animation to our slide. With an object selected, go to the Build tab and click Add Build next to either Build In or Build Out. Choose a transition effect, and you can further customize its timing and behavior. When you present this slide, you'll see a series of dots below the slide thumbnail. Those will turn green as your builds are triggered. You can also control the build order by dragging animations in the list and set whether animations happen on click or automatically. The slide notes section below the canvas lets you add notes to each slide. Click the slide notes button at the bottom right to toggle this section. These can be used for your own reference or be shown on a stage display for presenters. You can format your notes with bold, italic, different fonts, and colors using the text tab in the inspector. The presentation editor is where ProPresenter really shines, giving you precise control over every aspect of your presentations. We've covered the basics today, but I encourage you to experiment with different objects, effects, and settings to create your own unique slides. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next tutorial.